we might have a few too many drinks. And of course, then at 12.01 a.m., the phone would ring. We load network logging data. So it's hundreds of millions of records per day. That's impressive. As a result, we partition at five minute levels and throw away old data after just a few months. But dropping old partitions takes a lot longer than we expect what is going on. And I'll admit, the first thing I thought when this person came up with this question was, I bet they've got global indexes or they've got effectively a lot of index structures, dependencies, et cetera, on this table. And that's why it's taking a long time to drop because of the underlying dependent objects. So there's a bit of to and fro here. And they came back and said, actually, no, because we are loading literally billions of records every day, we understand that the cost of having indexes is prohibitive. So these are just tables with no indexes. They're just plain old partition tables, no indexes at all. And yet dropping partitions is taking an extraordinarily long time. To explain that, we need to take a little trip down memory lane first and to explain the concept of how partitioning has evolved over the years since version 11. Here's a very simple example of a partition table that we would conventionally create in almost any version of Oracle going back to 8.0. It's my table called sales, and I've got a low partition, which is everything less than the year 2000. And then year 2000 is everything less than 2001. The year 2023 is everything less than 2024. So I've got one partition for each year. And as a DBA, we would set up a partition like this. And what would happen is New Year's Eve would come along. And like most DBAs on New Year's Eve, you know, we might pop out and have one drink. We have two. Yep, sure, we're on call. But you know, what, are the, what are the chances of being called on New Year's Eve? And we might have a few too many drinks. And of course, then at 12.01 a.m., the phone would ring. And why would the phone ring? It's because someone would try insert a brand new row for the next year. And because as a DBA, you may have forgotten to add a new petition, we get this error and your application has come to a grinding halt. I must admit, there, there was once many, many years ago where I did get caught out by this exact same thing. Someone actually tried to create a, a row in a petition that didn't exist, and yet I was in a taxi, uh, no Uber in those days, uh, into the way of the office. What we used to do as an insurance policy back in earlier versions of Oracle was we would create a sort of a, a max, sort of a bucket petition, like values less than max value, such that all future rows, if they ever came along unexpectedly, they would simply drop into that bucket. That in itself had a number of problems because ultimately you had to clean that mess up. You ended up having to do split petitions and that might create problems with indexes, et cetera, et cetera. But this was sort of our insurance policy, just in case whatever job we had in place that was meant to pre-create positions wasn't working. The reason I call this a trip down memory lane is we solved all this hassle back in 11G with interval partitioning, which I'm sure most people are currently using for any kind of range-based partitioning. All you really added was a single line saying, I want my partitions to be intervals, which means every partition is a fixed size. In this case, I'm saying it's every partition is one year. I can create as many partitions as I want to start with, but then the moment I try insert a row into a following year, I think I have a demo here, yep, then I would actually automatically create them. So here's an example, here's my sales table, it's still on a single partition, which I defined in advance. I insert a brand new row and hey presto, the database creates a brand new partition for me in this case, let's say I've, I've put one in January 2023, it would create a petition for me for less than 2024. So no more getting called out at midnight after you've had a few beers. Everyone loves interval partitioning. One thing that we don't really dwell on that much is the concept of what we call an anchor partition when it comes to interval partitioning. When you have a standard range partition table, each partition is bounded to the next partition. So if this is my first partition here, Wherever the next partition starts is the uh, definition of where this previous partition ends. There, there's no concept of, of gaps here. Therefore, each range could be arbitrary in size. That's why you only ever specify values less than. You don't specify start and ending. The ending value is defined by the start of the next partition. Interval partitioning is a bit different. With interval partitioning, you have an initial range partition, but then the intervals are always fixed size, as I said. And so if I have a petition out here for 2024, it's a fixed size of one year. As a result, we could have gaps. If I had rows in here for the year 2000 and rows in here for the year 2024, there are no petitions in this range here. They are 
logical partitions. We have a effectively a non-existent partition for each year up until the actual physical one. Because the interval is fixed in size, we actually know in advance every possible partition that will ever exist. They only become instantiated or physical segments when we actually add a row. But what that does mean is this here is important, even if we never put data in it, because every partition is a multiple of its interval size out into the future. If you're always defined as a fixed size, we need to have a starting point. We must know what this point here is, or at least this point and its size, in order to know where all the others will fit. We need this what we call an anchoring point from which all intervals will be generated from. As I'm saying, the partitions must start somewhere. So let's explore a little demo now, our first demo of the day. But here we have version 11. So I've connected here to version 11 on the VM on my old machine over there. I'm gonna create a partition table that's interval based. And I'll do a very, very simple one. It's simply everything from 2020, 1st of January, or one day, so each day uh, equals one partition. And I'm just gonna insert 12 days worth of data. So literally we end up with 2nd of January, 13th of January, we've got 12 partitions in there. Here's the partition I originally defined, and then the database came along and generated automatically named partitions for me every time I inserted a brand new day. Let's grab one of these random partitions. I'm grabbing the fifth partition here, partition partition number five. So that's gonna be, I think the 6th of January, it's sysp68, and I wanna drop that partition. So I'm using a SQL plus here to remember the name of that partition. And I can say, drop that partition, no problems. Now partition number five is no longer the same partition. All the partitions have been dropped down by one. So I can grab another partition once and again in the middle of the table and I can drop that, no problems at all. So I can drop the partitions in the normal way. What happens if I try to drop partition P1? It actually says the last partition in the range section cannot be dropped. You can't drop this partition. And the reason is back in 11G, this is what we call the anchor partition. This is the partition that says all others will be a multiple of the interval size starting from this point. Therefore, if you were to take that partition away, I would no longer know where the partition start and therefore we block it. We wouldn't allow you to do it. Back in 11, because partitions must start somewhere, we wouldn't let you drop that what we call the anchoring partition. We fixed this in 12C and the way we fixed it is fairly simple. If you're trying to drop the last anchor partition, we know there must be at least one interval partition sitting in front of that. Why don't we just grab that partition and make it change it from an interval partition into an anchor partition. It goes from an interval of size one year or one day or whatever to a fixed range of size one day, one year. In that way, we've moved the anchoring point along a little bit and now we can drop the old partition. Diagrammatically, we do something like this. Here's our existing anchor partition. Here's the interval partitions dropped out. We want to drop, say, that one. What we'll do is we'll simply say, okay, erase that one and redefine the anchor partition like that. And in that way, we always have an anchor partition. Therefore, I could now go ahead and drop this one if I wanted to, because I have a remaining anchor partition to continue on the interval boundaries. 12C really was simply doing what we could have done manually with an alter table command. We simply say, okay, let's grab some existing interval partitions and we'll convert them to range partitions. Therefore, they can become an anchor and therefore you'll never get that error anymore. Having said all that, that trip down memory lane, let's return to the problem at hand where we have a customer here, which has a interval partition table with the anchor partition, but they've got a lot of partitions. If they've got five minute partitions and they're doing a few months worth of data, that's a lot of partitions. Let's do another demo. I'm creating a table here. I'm, the only reason you see table space demo here is my table space demo has fixed size, very small extents to make sure I don't consume all the space on my poor laptop here. I'm choosing 30 minute partitions and I'm going to insert around about, I think well, that's a day, so about 60 days worth of data. I'm simulating here lots of partitions of a small size, not as low as five minutes, but if we actually go have a look here, we can see I've inserted data from the 1st of January 2020 to 1st of March 2020, so it's about 60 days and that is carved up over 30 minute partitions. So there's a lot of small partitions here, each with a few number of rows in there. If we have a look, we can say from this demo, rather than having thousands of partitions, I've got 2,882 partitions. That's a manageable size for this machine and for the demo we're about to perform. As our customer said, every, at the end of a few months, they discard the data and they drop a day's worth of partitions. Now for me, a day's worth of partitions, I've got 30 minute partitions. 
So two of them makes an hour and two times 24 makes a day. So I'm gonna drop 48 partitions and we can already start to see what's perhaps upsetting our poor customer. They're dropping, what, five minutes? That's 12 in an hour. So they're dropping 288 partitions every to drop a day. I'm only dropping 48, so I'm dropping about a sixth of that. And even so, it took me 25 seconds. As we saw, there's no indexes, there's nothing, there's no magic going on here. And let's face it, a drop partition should be pretty much instantaneous. It's just a dictionary operation. We're not deleting any data, we're simply dropping segments. Let's have a look at what happened here. As, as I mentioned before, from 11G to 12C, we introduced this thing where we will move the anchor partition. And as we look here, if I just grab the first five partitions, you can see all these have the interval names associated with them. But you can see one of them has now been converted to a range partition. It's no longer an interval partition. We did that such that we had an anchor to work with. If I go and look at all the partitions, you can see they all remain as interval partitions, except for that very first one. It's become an anchor partition. So where was the 25 seconds spent? It wasn't, I did a trace on this. In fact, I did a, a trace earlier today to, to see what was going on. And it's not actually anything to do with dropping the data. It all comes down to this particular statement here. Tab part dollars, as you can, as the name suggests, is an internal dictionary table, which is table partitions. And as you drop partitions, all the effort is actually not in the dropping, all the effort is in going through all the other partitions and deciding which one needs to become an anchor partition. Our demo here is probably the most common one, which is we're always dropping the oldest partitions. But of course, that might not be the case. We, we have to cater to any case. You could pluck any of those interval partitions from anywhere in your list of partitions and drop one. We have a common code path that says, okay, you've gone that. What do we have to do now to make sure that we have a successful anchor partition? Because you can't have a range followed by some intervals, then followed by a range, then some intervals. Effectively, we have to clean up all the mess. The database doesn't know that our most common operation will always be dropping from the start because we could drop from anywhere. The demo I ran earlier today took about 13 seconds and you can see almost all that time, heavy CPU was spent actually manipulating the table to make sure the interval and range anchor points are correctly set. Let's go back to the demo and see if we can work around. Here is your simple fix and literally is this simple. If I take any existing partition table, which is interval partitioned, and I simply set the interval to its existing value, I've simply said, yes, my table is interval by 30 minutes. Please alter the table and set it to an interval of 30 minutes. It seems like a, a non-operation. But if we go look at the partition definitions now, we can see when you reset the interval to the same value, every single existing interval partition becomes converted to a range partition. It becomes an anchor partition for all subsequent partitions. So now I no longer have any interval partitions in this table. Every single one of them is if, as if I'd created them manually using the full syntax of a range. It's only when I go add the very next day or next 30 minutes worth of data that we'll actually get one more partition again. Well, once the database sees that there are no interval partitions, there is no work to be done to work out which one needs to be the anchor. I've automatically got an immediate candidate anchor no matter what partition I drop. So let's now rerun this same demo. Now, let's say the next day has now come along and once again, I'm dropping the next day's worth of partitions. So we saw last time it took about 25 seconds. Let's now drop the same or the next 48 partitions. Hey presto, less than a second. The key thing is here is we've gone from 25 seconds to almost no time. Because as I said, the dropping element was fast. It was managing the data dictionary to make sure that all the interval and anchor points are all correctly set that actually took all the time. So if you take that preliminary step of every time you want to drop a large number of partitions, run that alter table, reset the interval to its existing value, and you're going to have no performance issues at all. Obviously, ideally, we would not have to have customers need to know this in advance. And so we're doing a bit of work in this area to see if we can improve this, to see if we can, for example, look at these boundary cases where the vast majority of the time, someone's dropping the oldest partition. Maybe we can put some optimal code path in to say, if you're starting from the very end of the table, we only have to look forward to the very first interval partition and set that one and don't have to worry about anything else. So we're looking at doing some optimizations, but until those come along, please be careful if you're using what I call hyper partitioning, i.e. once you start getting into the thousands of partitions, uh, you need to be careful when it comes to dropping them.